September 10, Nate Diaz is going fighting Kamzat Shemay as a UFC 279 pay-per-view main event at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. They haven't offered me anybody. I've been I've been asking for five cents whenever. I asked for like four or five people, and there was like no no go on their side. And then they finally offered me the Hamzat. And then I was like, all right, well why not? Let's just get it done with, it, get it over with. And I asked for the Hamzat fight. I don't care. I don't care about Nate Diaz. I come for everybody, like I said, you know, I love to fight. It doesn't matter if somebody top and somebody on top. I love just fight. The both fighters have finally agreed on both a date for their 170-pound headliner. That is non title bout will be the main event of the card. This is going to be fourth time for Nate DX, and the first time for Kamzat, and the fact this is going to headline a big event like that. You think about the wars that Nate Diaz has put on and the, and the incredible fights and the big fights that he's done with us. You go do whatever you want to do, man. Uh, we got it done. That's the fight he wanted. We made it. And it's a good fight. It's a fight that people will want to see. It's a fight that people will be interested in. And uh, here we are. The Nate DX game plan has long been to pressure and clinch or work the opponent into the fence. More than most sapphires, DX makes great use of his right-handed jab. He throws the strike with enough snap to make it a threat. But DX actually uses the strike correctly. What a fight. And for those who maybe thought the layoff would be a factor for Nate Diaz. Nathan Diaz is constant pressure. He's in your face. He's boxing you up and he's long. Nate possesses a ton of skill on the feet. Obviously, we know what he does on the ground. That truly has made him so relatable to people. DX background also has always been jujitsu. His bottom game has evolved quite a bit over the years as he moved from climbing his legs up high on his opponent's shoulders to inverting in search of leg locks. Most recently, he seems to have settled on a more open fluid guard where he looks for arm bars and triangles while occasionally rolling for leg attacks. I've seen Nate roll with guys. He's a fucking legit, very high level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt yeah. under a very respected camp. Hey, I'm here to kill it, be killed in Stockton, California. Fuck this little bitch, fuck you. Most of the X submissions come from scrambles or when his opponent tries to take him down. And the X is excellent at capitalizing on these opportunities. He just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> it is what has made people fall in love with Nathan Diaz's style because he pops that jab and it doesn't seem as though he's throwing it hard, but he's landing with a lot of thud and he turns it over at the very end. Diaz is popping, and then he slaps the right hand behind him. The right hand kind of slaps down at you. Michael Johnson, Anthony Pettis, all those guys that you have seen him beat, and then once he finds his range, he drops the right hand. Hurts me, I mean, you saw him hurt Leon Edwards up at 170. DX does a nice job of drawing his opponent out with a jab. After punching a bit at range, where DX does a nice job keeping good head position in the clinch and ripping into his opponent's body, and is not the quickest fighter, it becomes DX who lands cleanly, and his opponent will often come up within inches of DX chin. I train every day. I wake up, I train, and I try to figure out how to deal with it. It's because I need some backup here. And somebody tell me my first give me a fight. Anybody, anyone. I want to finish my mission that I've been on for a long time. You've seen on everything. I've been like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck this, and fuck that. And what did it do? Got me raised after raised after raised. Motherfuckers be sitting there doing what they're told all the time. Could you see Nate choking Kamzat out? Who the f knows, man? Nate is a beast. Yeah, he is. No, I just want to see him win. I like when he wins. What I like is Nate getting paid. You know, if Nate Nate gets paid big for that fight, if they set up a main event somewhere, mm -hmm. with Hamzat and Nate for a title elimination fight, I think if every fight went 100 rounds, Nate would never lose. You know, like the skinny guy, Nate Diaz. What I gonna do with this guy? <laughs> he gonna get the tired after four first minutes and I gonna knock him off. You know? And this guy not that level, not my level. Eh? People don't wanna see that guy. Comes at fundamental base in combat is his superb wrestling. In every fight start, the variety takedown ability from Comes at is something to behold. He can shoot low, but also often shoots with the intent of rising from below his opponent's base and getting to the double under body lock. He has even promptly brought them to his corner in the past. Because then he came back against Li Jingliang in October and then choked him out. An absolutely unforgettable display of dominance. And that's what he's shown every single time inside the octagon. I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ! I'm the king! Ah! 
Hamzat is able to maintain and he's got a ton of confidence. The guy's never lost. Undefeated fighters brings in the octagon. He is relatively basic. He has good tight boxing and power that makes every shot count. He definitely wants to be the one pushing forward. Because as his best shots typically come tightly up the center channel, if he can get his opponent either moving into him or trapped against the cage, his chances of landing are high. When you look at Hamzat Chimaev, he's a tremendous wrestler. Of course, he's a good mixed martial artist. He's got the taller guy, he's got the longer reach, he's the bigger guy generally. I want to fight more because I'm hungry. I will be the best fighter in this game and uh, take the belts how many is possible. Hamzat is dangerous, he has a ton of power, and starting the Gilbert Burns fight is that he's tough. He's not going to give up on himself. So maybe he seemed as though he wasn't as dominant in that fight, but we saw him against another guy that's right at the top of the division, go through the fire, and not only win, but win in what can be considered one of the best fights that we've seen all year. Kamzat is just way bigger than Nate. And he's taller than him. He's ultimately longer than him. He has more power. He's faster. He's so durable, hard to hurt. He's very athletic. And then comes that it comes to his skills. He's a kryptonite deny Nate DX. Nate does not do well against wrestlers. Comes out to do that to him. It doesn't feel like a fair fight. I hope, desperately hope, that Nate at least comes through it all right. But after watching what, what Hamzat did to, to Reese McKee and to, uh, you know, to John Phillips, yes, of course, Nate's got good jiu-jitsu. But there comes a point where jiu-jitsu is nullified by good wrestling. I think he gets nullified and I think he gets beaten up horrendously from the top position. Do I think Hamzat Chemaev is going to win? Absolutely. Do I think he's going to rely on, on wrestling and, and, and ground and pound and try to physically overwhelm him? It will happen. Do I think Hamzat Chemaev wins? Yes. But when I'm looking at Nathan Diaz, I don't better get him to go down quietly to just let this happen. Hamzat is going to absolutely control there. That's where he shines as well. And he's even better Nate. When it comes to the grappling aspect of the clinch, in the grappling to control the opponent, take him to the ground, and maneuver them that is going to be Kamzat world. So no matter where the fight really goes, Nate is going to be trouble. I've been through all these errors. Remember fucking everybody. Uh, I'm still here, still better than ever. I'm ready to move the fuck on. Hey Diaz, let's go brother, let's go. Let's see who is the real gangster.